Hello, hello again friends and loyal Wolfpack members, Chaos Wolfin, welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today we are going to be taking a look at Power Play, but not so much of an in-depth look as to everything that encompasses Power Play. No, we're basically just going to be looking at how to go and get the Power Play modules that each of the powers can give you. First of all, we've got to go and have a bit of a rundown as to what each of these modules are. And we're going to go down the list from number 1 to number 11. First of all, we have here Edward Mahon, and what he gives you is the uh, Retributor. Now what this is, is a small class 1 beam laser, which has a high heat damage. So what this means is it dumps more heat onto your target vessel, so that they heat up faster, at the cost of direct damage from the weapon itself. Next we have Arissa Lavinia Duval, and what she gives you is the Imperial Hammer. Now this is a class 2 railgun, but it's a multi-shot railgun. So instead of firing one shot, it actually fires a burst of three, at the cost of having less damage per shot. It also goes and has three times the maximum ammo of a standard railgun. Now Ashling Duval, she's going to be the one that most people are familiar with because she gives out prismatic shields. Now prismatic shields are shield generators that are about 50% heavier, use 50% more power, but they generate a 20% stronger shield. And there are thereabouts, the exact numbers I'm not too certain on. Not only that, but the shields are green, as are all the weapons from Powerplay. Another thing to note about these shields is whereas every other Powerplay module is limited to one specific class. These prismatic shields are every shield class or every size that you can get from class 1 or size 1 to 8. Next is Felicia Winters. What she gives you is the Pulse Disruptor, which is a class 2 pulse laser that can cause module malfunctions in addition to dealing damage. Uh, what it says here is the malfunction does not destroy the module, it simply disables them temporarily. Alright, okay, so very similar to one of the experimental effects from the engineers, but this is actually built into the weapon itself. Bearing in mind, it is fixed like all power play weapons. Next is the T900 himself, Zachary Hudson, and what you get from him is the Pacifier Frag Cannon. Now, the Pacifier Frag Cannon is a class 3 or large frag cannon that has a tighter cone, longer range, but does less damage per shot. But overall, you're going to be doing a fair amount of damage with this thing, considering that you're going to be able to hit more of the shots from it. Bear in mind though, again, it is fixed. Next is Pranav Antel, and what you get from him is the Enforcer Cannon. The Enforcer Cannon is a Class 1 multi-cannon style weapon that basically deals more damage per shot, but has a slower rate of fire. And it is also fixed, so it's kind of halfway between a Class 1 cannon and a Class 1 multi-cannon. It's also been noted that despite its low rate of fire, a significant barrel spin-up time is required. Next is Zamina Torvel, and from her you get the Mining Lance. Now, this is somewhat of a hybrid between a Mining Laser and a Beam Laser. It's classified as uh, a Mining Laser capable of inflicting more combat damage than regular Mining Lasers. Not sure how many people will find this useful, perhaps if you do a lot of mining, definitely go for Zamina Torvel. I do believe that they are actually slightly longer range, or somewhat longer range, than the standard mining lasers as well. I'm not 100% sure on that, because I've never used them. The main issue I find with the mining lance is it is only class 1. Now next is Denton Petraeus, and what you get from him is the advanced plasma accelerators. Now these plasma accelerators, they're class 3, so large weapon mounts, they have a higher rate of fire, but do less damage per shot. Also, each shot generates less heat individually, but overall, you have a higher damage per second than standard plasma accelerators, but you also generate more heat than standard plasma accelerators per second. So, there is a trade-off there. Again, these are fixed only, but then again, so are normal plasma accelerators. Next is Li Yongri, and what you get from him is Packhound Missile Racks. These are class 2 or medium missile launchers, and they fire salvos of drunk missiles. Every single time you pull the trigger, you actually fire out four micro-missiles that have an erratic flight path, but will actually home in on a target. 
they have a really good rate of fire and they have a higher overall damage per second than standard seeker missiles. Not only that, but it is good to note that because of the increased amount of missiles being fired towards the enemy per salvo, even if they are armed with point defenses, you stand a good chance of actually damaging this target. Next is Yuri Grom, the first player power in the game. And what you get from these guys is a missile launcher called the containment missiles. These are dumb fire missiles, so there's no seeking at all. If you hit a target vessel, it will actually go and reboot and disrupt the target's frameshift drive. You can chain these as well, so you can pretty much stop any ship from running away if you can hit successively. Again, it's poignant to note that this is actually a medium class weapon. And lastly, that is Archon Delane. What you get from him is the Cyto Scrambler. It's a burst laser, it claims to be, a class 1, and it's very good against shields, but does absolutely nothing against a hull. Which makes sense considering that Archon Delane is a pirate. But considering that Hatchbreak Olympics no longer require a target ship's shields to be down in order to go and perform their task, it's somewhat of a moot point here. Again, this is a class 1 weapon and it is fixed. Now that's all of the modules that you can get from Powerplay. Now all we've got to go and do is find out how you go about getting them. And this is pretty simple. What you want to do is go and choose whichever power you want to go and support. Let's say it's Ashling Duvel, the Blue Khaleesi, or the Prismatic Princess as we like to call her. And you can go and support her. Normally this won't say defect, it will actually go and say join power or something along those lines. It says defect when you're with another power. So you can click on that and then you will join them. And once you have joined them, you can click tab onto the pledge icon up here and it will tell you around this area how long you've been with this power. So let's go back and we can actually see that in the power that I'm joined right now, which is Denton Petraeus, because I want the advanced plasma accelerators again. We go here, you can see that I've actually been with him for exactly four weeks now, which is perfect. Because what is required is you need to be with each of the powers for four weeks. Because you can see here, you have to have been with the power for four weeks to get the advanced plasma accelerator. And you have to get to rank three. How do you get to rank three? Well, you have to go and get a bunch of merits. Now, there are three main ways of getting power play merits. As you can see here, I've already got some on this account. Now, these were completely coincidental. I didn't actually mean to go out to get these. It just kind of happened. Now, there are three main ways of earning merits for power play. The first one, and the kind of lazy one, is the political cargo. And what we do is you can actually go and pick up the political cargo here. You can pick up 10 within every 30 minutes. So we can confirm. There we go. We now have a bunch of Denton Portrayer's political cargo on board. Now what we can do is we can actually go and spend 100,000 credits, like this, to go and just kill the timer, so that we can go and get the next lot. So this is a bit of a money sink, but it is the laziest and safest way of actually going and picking up these merits, especially if you don't fancy your skills in combat. The big question, however, is where do you go and pick up the political cargo? Well, you would get it from your particular chosen powers controlled systems. Although it's good to note as well that not every power offers you the option to go and do this. So just be aware of that. Now these political cargo containers are going to need to be delivered somewhere. And you can't just deliver them wherever the hell you want. One of the best things to do is to have a look at the preparation systems. Because that's what this, these items are for, are for preparing systems to expand into. Now having a look at the preparation tab under your powers page, you can actually go and see some of the systems that we are preparing. Anything with a red number means that we're no, not likely going to go and actually go and prepare for that one. So we've got the top five here. What we can do is we can actually go and choose one of these and go and deposit the cargo there. Now here we go. We have actually just gone and delivered 10 merits to this expansion system. And it is good to note that one ton equals one merit. So you're going to have to deliver 750 tons in total to get to grade it. So you are going to have to deliver a grand total of 750 tons within a week in order to go and qualify to get the module that you want. 
So this can be a little bit time consuming, especially if trading really isn't your kind of thing. If you prefer combat, then we've got you covered. That's what the other two methods go and entail. Now, all powers have preparation, expansion, and control. Now, any of them that have one or more of them is combat. So what we can do is go into one of these systems that is either being expanded, controlled, or prepared. And then what we can do is go and partake in some special combat. In this case, we have control and expansion. So we're going to go and have a look at expansion. The main problem with this, however, is because so few people actually go and use power play, it's sometimes hard to go and find specific systems. Like, as we can see here, nobody's gone and prepared systems well enough to actually be able to go and expand into. So, this is a bit dicey. Now, if we could actually go and find a system that we're going to go and expand, you'd be able to go and f you'd be able to go into said system and you'd be faced with a special type of conflict zone. Zachary Hudson has special conflict zones called military strikes and Arissa Lavini Duval has special ones called crime sweeps, I believe. Never seen them myself, not really taking part in them because there is another way that is uniform to all powers. And this is the method that I favor myself. And this is undermining. Now, in order to go and perform undermining, what we need to do is go and jump into another system, preferably one controlled or exploited by a power linked to a different superpower. What I mean is because we are with Dent Betrayers, we are linked to the Empire. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and jump over to Zachary Hudson's control system here because he is with the Federation. So that is where we're going to go. What we're looking for in these systems is something like this, Federal Logistics or so on. Basically, a power play NPC. You'll also have Federal Enforcers or something along these lines. Now, what we want to do is we want to go and interdict these ships, which is why you need a Frameshift Drive interdictor. And as we can see, before we kill him, I have 330 power play merits. What we're going to go and do is we're going to go and interdict this guy and see how many we get. So let's go and interdict. Now, do bear in mind that this is probably going to get you wanted in the system that you've decided to target. Because not only are you interdicting these, which is going to get you a fine, you're also going to get wanted for killing them. Unless you're in an anarchy system. So let's just kill this guy nice and quickly. There we go, he's gone. There we go, we've gained a bounty. But we have also gone and gained 30 power play merits. So for every kill, regardless of the size of ship, we're going to be getting power play merits. 30 of them. So this is, in fact, quite a very quick way of getting your power play merits. Interdicting them out of supercruise isn't the only way to find these guys. You can also find them in resource extraction sites. And what you do not want to do, however, is go and kill a power play NPC that is aligned with the same superpower your uh, faction is. So because we're with Denton Betrayers, we do not want to go and kill any power play NPCs that are aligned with Arissa Lavini Duvel, Ashling Duvel, or Zamina Torvel. Those are off the table, because if we kill them, we will get told that we are committing treason, in a way. So that's not good. If you do come across these, you can, in fact, go and earn merits from these but what you need to do is pirate the cargo from their ships and deliver it yourself so uh, the amount of effort for this is really not amazing so what you want to do is just go and ignore them completely if you can once you've actually picked up either 750 merits or however many you're comfortable carrying at this particular time what you then do is you go and visit a control system now you find this by going to the power play tab and then selecting control. You find the closest one to you, go into starport services and contacts. You'll then have the power contacts tab at the bottom and then you can then click redeem all applicable vouchers. What this will do is hand them in. So what this will do is actually hand in all the merits that you're currently holding. So we've just handed in the 330 and as we can see, we've now got a maximum total merits of 370. So we'll go back to the main page. And that means that we no longer are carrying around our merits. 
Now, I'm not 100% certain whether or not we lose these when we die. I do believe we do, so I wouldn't take the risk. Now, once you've got 750 merits with your desired power, and you've been with them over four weeks, this isn't quite enough to go and instantly go and start buying your weapons. What you need to do is wait for the power play tick. Because the power play cycle ticks over once every week, and this is on Thursdays. So as soon as you have the 750 merits, you've been with them four weeks, you can then go and hand in all of your merits, and then wait until the next Thursday, you will then have access for the next power play cycle, so the next week until next the next Thursday after that one, to go and buy all the modules that you want. Now after you gain access to buying these, it doesn't matter where you are, you will always be able to buy them regardless of what station you are in, as long as it has an outfitting department. It is good to bear in mind, however, that the discounts from Founders World and Li Yongri systems do actually count towards these modules as well. So that's how you go and get your power play modules in Elite Dangerous. I do hope you found this video useful. Uh, but that's going to be it for this tutorial. Like the video if you've liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Neither of those good enough for you, that's what the comments are for. You can also come and join our community on Facebook or Inara. Links are going to be in the video description. There you will also find the link to our Discord server. I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, my fellow commanders, keep flying and stay shiny.